At 64 years old, I'm not interested in technology for technology's sake. But when it comes to ChatGPT, that is a tool that I am using all the time. It's great for research. I use it for writing emails. I use it for helping me make Medicare decisions. Uh, I use it to help answer some questions about financial planning and home maintenance. And hopefully at the end of this video, you'll feel more comfortable with ChatGPT and you'll understand a little bit more about why you should be using it as well. So ChatGPT is basically a computer program that can have conversations with you, similar to texting with a friend. So it was created by OpenAI, and basically what it's done is it's gone out and it's gathered data from articles, it's gathered data off the web, it's gathered data from scholarly resources, pulled it all together, and then it's taught to be able to respond to your questions in a very conversational manner, and it really excels at doing research. That's what you probably use ChatGPT for the most, is probably doing research. Another great thing that ChatGPT excels at is writing. So you're going to hear me use the term prompt during this video. And basically, prompt is a question. You have to formulate a prompt and then enter that in ChatGPT, and that's what ChatGPT uses to determine what kind of data to return to you. You'll see some of the different prompts that I write, and the better that you get at writing these prompts, the better the data that you'll get back out of ChatGPT. So for today, I'm not gonna go deep into how to write great prompts, but you'll see what I'm doing and how I'm questioning ChatGPT. And in the future, I'll do some videos that will talk about creating reusable prompts. So stay tuned for those. So there's a couple things that I've created that are free downloadable PDFs for you. And one is just a reference guide for ChatGPT. You'll be able to download that and use it as you're getting used to ChatGPT and all the features and functionality that it has. And then another one is a ChatGPT safe use reference card. So there are certain things that you would never want to enter into ChatGPT. Both of these PDFs will be available in the description for this video. You can download them, you can print them out, and have them with you as you start using ChatGPT on a daily basis. So at 64 years old, one thing that I've really had to do some research on is Medicare. And there's a lot of information that starts getting sent to you in the mail, and you're trying to understand all of it. So ChatGPT is perfect for doing some research before you go in and you talk to an insurance agent. You'll get armed with all the right questions to ask and be a more informed consumer. So let's look at a prompt that you could enter into ChatGPT and gain some information about Medicare. So here's the first prompt that I wrote. Are there any special rules or regulations regarding Medicare, Medigap plans in my state? Sometimes states have different rules and regulations regarding Medicare, Medigap insurance, and I was interested to see what my local state had, and I went ahead and put this prompt in, and let's see what we get. So here's what ChatGPT returned, and it's smart enough to know that I'm in Washington state, so what it did is it gave me some state-specific rules for Washington and Medicare plans. So what if you had a follow-up question to this? Let's go ahead and add one more prompt so we can look and see how ChatGPT can even help us with deeper research. So here we are out in YouTube. Now, let's say you've come across a video on Medicare. And so here's one from MedicareSchool.com. I've watched a lot of their videos. And Sometimes they give you a lot of information packed into 30 or 40 minutes, right? And I'd like to be able to print this out and really understand what the key components of this video are. So I can go up here, I can copy the link to this video. Then what I can do is go back out to ChatGPT, I can start a new chat. I did that by just clicking right up here in the left-hand side and then I have to enter a prompt. So here's my prompt. 
Review this video and break it down into key points being covered. Use text, tables, and lists as needed. So after I put the prompt in here, all I have to do is put the video link in. And click here. And now what ChatGPT is going to do is it's going to review this video and break it down and you'd actually be able to take these talking points from the video and print them out for later use while you're doing your research. So if we scroll down, it does the summary breakdown of the video, an overview, talks about provider networks, etc. So that's one great way to use ChatGPT is to take something like an extensive YouTube video and then break it down into an overview, and then you can use that data at a later time. So as a retiree, a lot of times we're thinking about where can we relocate? Should we move from where we're at and maybe relocate to a lesser expensive state, city, that kind of thing? And ChatGPT is really effective at helping you with answering these kinds of questions. So let's take a look at this prompt. And again, a prompt is just simply another term for the question that you're going to ask ChatGPT. And notice I get really specific in my prompts, which states are most tax friendly, which of these states have the lowest cost of living. So you can ask two questions at once and then ChatGPT will bundle the data together and return it for you. So let's see what we get. It's out searching the web. And then it returns this list, most tax friendly states for retirees in 2025. And you get this list, you can go through and see which ones are the most tax friendly and then couple that with which ones have the lowest cost of living. And then it even does this really nice summary table where it tells you about the tax benefits for the state and it tells you what the cost of living. Some are high cost of living, some are less than average. And then it gives you this final takeaway. Now, what if you don't like the way that it's presented this data and you want it to be in a specific table designed by you? Here's my prompt. I said, put this data in a table of most favorable to least favorable based on tax friendliness and cost of living. So you get your rank and then it gives you an overall favorability. So here, for instance, a state like Florida, good on taxes, but a higher cost of living because a lot of people are moving to Florida. So this is really nice. You can just tell ChatGPT to take data and configure it in a way that's easiest for you to understand. So let's start another chat and look at another example. Let's say at church you've been given this task, and in this case, the task is this. I need you to create an email template for weekly prayer requests from members of our church. You could sit and you could try to figure this out on your own, or you could do it the fast way because ChatGPT is great at writing. And here's your email template. Hello, you can add some information. It gives you brackets where you can add some inf extra information there, like church family. It talks about each week we gather prayer requests, then you can put the prayer requests in. You can add a scripture. So it just does that really fast. Now, I would spend a lot of time agonizing over trying to make the perfect template. In this case, I just let ChatGPT do it for me, and it's just that simple. Let's look at one more example where ChatGPT could help you make some decisions around home maintenance. This is an exact question that I have about my own roof. And here's the prompt that I created. It says, my asphalt shingle roof is 10 years old. I live in a climate where it's very hot in the summer and low humidity. And then I give it some more information about some of the other kind of weather conditions that I live in. And then I want ChatGPT to give me an idea based on information, how many more years does it look like I could go without doing a re-roof? And it talks about typical shingle lifespan. It looks at the factors in my particular climate, it looks at my roof age, and then it even asks to look at some other variables. 
But at least based on what I shared, the estimate is that I'd have seven to 10 years left before I need to do a re-roof. Now, again, you would want to have a professional roofer come out and evaluate your roof, right? Same thing with Medicare questions, right? ChatGPT is a helper. It's good for research. Many times, especially if you're thinking about using ChatGPT regarding financial questions or medical questions, you do want to have a medical professional or your financial planner, et cetera, look at this information that you're gathering. You're using it as a tool for research. So when you go in and talk to these people, like a doctor, like a surgeon, like your financial planner, like somebody at your bank, right? You're prepared to ask really educated questions and come in ahead of time so you're ready to go and you're using your time really efficiently and you have a lot of background and have educated yourself before you, you go in. And so that's how I use ChatGPT. For instance, we looked at that Medicare example. Would I use ChatGPT to solely make the decision for me about what Medicare Medigap plan to use? No, I wouldn't, but I would educate myself using ChatGPT and then go in and talk to my insurance broker armed with all that information so I can ask the right kind of questions when I'm meeting with a professional in this particular area. So I hope this has helped you understand some ways to use ChatGPT. I'll be doing some further videos on it in the future, talking about prompting. Don't forget to look at the description for this video and download the two PDF files that I have. One is about the safe use of ChatGPT, and the other one is a quick reference guide that you can use as you're beginning to learn about this tool and use it on an everyday basis. And again, ChatGPT is free. You can use it and do quite a few prompts for free. Now, if you do use the paid version, it's about $20 a month. And the advantage in that is you're not going to be limited in the number of prompts that you can use. It's going to return data faster. So there are some advantages in using the paid version, but I don't think you need to most of the time. I did this whole video using the free version and you can see I asked ChatGPT at least seven questions and it still hasn't told me that I've reached my limit for the specific time frame that I'm in. Again, I hope this has been helpful. My name is Mike Shuey. Thanks for visiting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more content like this. And until next time, take care.